Hi, welcome everyone to our Cecilia Health webinar. I'm Emily. I'm one of the dietitians and diabetes educators here with Cecilia Health. And today we will be talking about chronic kidney disease and diabetes. Um, here at the very bottom of the screen, there is a phone number 1 800. Marcia, could you go back one? There you go. Thank you. 1 800 263 6317. If you're having any difficulties, please check that out that number. But thank you again for joining us today. And today's webinar, it is meant to be an interactive program. So the idea is that Marsha, one of our other diabetes educators, she will be uh, providing a short presentation and then there will be time at the end to do some Q&A. So on your toolbar here on the right, there is a questions tab that you can enter any questions or comments that you may have and she will be happy to address those at the very end of our webinar today. And always as a disclaimer, we know that the information you are about to hear may motivate you to make some changes, but please do talk to your doctor before making any changes to your current routine. The Cecilia Health Registered Dietitian will pro provide strategies to help you manage your chronic kidney disease and diabetes. And this online Q&A session is intended to give general advice. This information is not a substitute for personal medical advice and involves the professional opinion of the Cecilia Health RD as well. So our, I'm so excited to uh, present. Uh, our presenter for today is Marsha. She is, um, she's a dietitian and a diabetes educator for more than can't, 20. Oh, I can't advance. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, oh, there we go. The arrow at the very bottom, if you move your mouse. Yeah, uh, uh, not that arrow, uh, where it says 03 uh -huh. of 22. Yeah, okay. there we go. <laughs> Yay! All right, here, I'll start. <laughs> Marsha Carlson has been a dietitian and diabetes educator for more than 25 years. She lives in the southwest Wisconsin near her parents, daughter, and her family, and she loves the outdoors and enjoys biking, running, and hiking when she's not playing with her grandchildren. So um, thank you all again for joining us today, and I'll hand it back on over to Marsha. So thank you. Hi, um, I'm Marsha Carlson, dietitian working with Cecilia Health. I've been a diabetes educator for quite some time, and um, I um, obviously haven't done a lot of webinars, so I'm goofing around with the slides, so I apologize. So um, anyway, I will discuss today how diabetes causes kidney disease, tips and habits to keep your kidneys healthy, some nutritional um, considerations when planning meals and how to promote how to eat to promote kidney health and of course as um, Emily said um, always consult your diet your physician um, regarding some of these suggestions but we'll highlight that as we go um, so how can diabetes cause kidney disease um, well your kidneys are made up of many million tiny fil filters are known as nephrons and over time, if your sugars are high or your blood pressure is high, um, the nephrons can be damaged, which can cause kidneys to, disease to progress. Um, and um, a screening test will, will show this, and your doctor um, will talk about what those tests are and how you can tell if your kidneys are being affected. Um, the main thing to know, take home message, is keeping your diabetes and blood pressure under good control can really slow the progression of the damage to your kidneys. And I do not know what happened. Oh, uh, do you want me to pull it up? Let me pull yeah. it up on my screen then. All right, one moment here. It got lost. Right. All right, Oop. you're great. All right, I'm gonna switch it over to me. Okay. Show my screen. All right, you should be seeing my screen now. Yep. Yep, okay, nope. great. Nope, Emily, I do not see it. You do not see it, okay. Let me, yes. Nope, that's back to you. So this should be back to me. Show my screen, okay. I don't see the I don't see the webinar. Okay. Well, here, why don't we? Um, let's see here. <laughs> um, why Why don't I go ahead and take over right okay. now while you're while you're doing that, and then you let me okay. know. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
so like Marsha was saying that the kidneys themselves are meant to help with the filtering um, overall. And we that's so important. Um, we know that for a chronic kidney disease, diabetes and high blood pressure are two things that can really play a role in terms of the progression of that kidney disease. So that's why we are uh, talking about it today and just kind of connecting the dots between that as well. Okay, so, got it. Okay. Yep. Do you want me to case? So, Let me yeah. go ahead and change it back to you then. Okay. All right. And it, you should be given access. All right. And we're looking at your main screen right there. Oh, you, I had it when you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll switch back over. Okay. With that. Okay. Um, okay. So. Oh terms, okay. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Pre-diabetes okay. and kidney disease. If you have pre-diabetes, don't, no, just, can you leave it like it is? Oh, do you want to just read off of mine? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay, let's do that then. There you go. Okay, okay yeah. I'm so sorry, folks. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It's no, that. Yeah. Uh, okay, if you have prediabetes, really taking action to prevent your type 2 diabetes is an important part of preventing kidney disease. Um, it, studies have shown that just by losing a moderate amount of weight, um, which can be only 10 to 14 pounds, can eat by eating healthier and getting adequate physical activity, um, 150 minutes each week or 30 minutes on most days can really prevent um, prediabetes uh, from developing diabetes and damaging your kidneys. Um, next slide. Next. Ah, thanks, you. So keep diabetes in control and your kidneys healthy. As I mentioned, this is kind of the ABC, as I like to think of it, where an A1C um, test is a blood test that your doctor will do just to make um, kind of an average blood sugar test. And that should be done at least twice a year um, just to tell where your overall diabetes control is. Um, the B is your blood pressure. Uh, you want to keep it below 130 over 80 or the target that your doctor set. Um, and then your, your C is your cholesterol and your doctor will test that. Um, it's very common for people with diabetes to have high blood pressure and higher cholesterol levels. So it's important that you remember to know those numbers. And additionally, um, they will test a kidney function test um, and an EGFR that looks for protein in your urine. Um, and your rate of filtration, which will show us overall how your kidneys are functioning to clear your blood. Next. So what um, habits can promote kidney health? Um, you want to eat a healthy diet, um, be physically active, as I said, take all the medicines as prescribed by your doctor, and keep good tabs on your blood sugar and your blood pressure. And again, communicate anything that looks out of range to your doctor. Um, planning meals, um, you want to eat enough, but not too much. So that's balancing, you know, how much, um, how many calories you're eating, how many meals you're eating in your snacks with your, with your, um, your Cecilia health coach. Um, protein is a nutrient that you want to make sure you get about six to eight ounces of lean protein. And again, that depends on, you know, your age and how big you are. Um, your kidneys do remove byproducts of protein, so it's really important to um, discuss with your doctor how much protein is right for you um, before embarking on any high or low protein diets. Sodium is a nutrient that's really important for your blood pressure and kidney health. Um, limiting to a teaspoon a day or 2,300 milligrams. Um, too much sodium can lead to high blood pressure, fluid retention, um, and it's also linked to heart disease. So really focusing on sodium um, is very important. Um, potassium is in fruits and vegetables. It functions um, to regulate our heart. Um, so uh, it's regulated in pretty tight control within our body. Um, sometimes if your kidneys aren't working well enough, they may ask you to limit some of the potassium that you eat. But again, consult your physician for those recommendations. Uh, phosphorus found in processed foods, fast food, cola drinks, chocolate, beer, um, also in some protein foods. Again, your kidneys will keep the right amount of phosphorus in your body. Um, when you get to the later stages of kidney disease, 
um, your doctor may ask you to um, count or control the amount of phosphorus that you're eating, but always consult your practitioner first. Next slide. Um, healthy eating, healthy choices for diabetes and kidney disease. Um, very much the same in a lot of ways. Um, eating lots of fruits and vegetables, um, eating whole grains, focusing on homemade foods, limiting restaurant foods, processed foods, um, cutting back on added salts, added sugars, choosing healthy fats. Um, in general, eating fewer refined carbohydrates, which are sweets, added sugar, is a good um, recommendation for really every healthy American, but particularly with diabetes um, and, and kidney disease. You may be asked again to reduce some of the potassium, phosphorus, protein, or sodium by your doctor, but always consult your doctor on those recommendations. Next. Um, herbs and spices, adding to re, um, replacing your salt. There's a chart here of some things that you can use um, to really replace the salt and cutting back um, without adding other flavor into your foods might be a little bland at first. But um, once you uh, experiment with some of these things, you'll find you don't even miss the added salt in your food. And on most of the sodium we do get um, is not added at the table. It's added in cooking. It's added in food processing. So um, Paying attention to that is very important. Next. Foods to limit um, or avoid to promote kidney health. So in general, you'll see these things are um, high in sodium, saturated fat, calories. Um, they may contain a lot of phosphorus or potassium. Um, bacon, hot dogs, brats, Polish sausage, any of those cured meats, luncheon meats, um, we'll generally have a lot of sodium added. Um, any box frozen canned meals, entrees, side dishes, any mixes, things like that, really check the label and see if that fits into your 2,300 milligrams per day. Um, generally, if it, if it has over 800, you can see it's taking up a big chunk of your sodium, so you may want to choose something else. And there are modified products on the market that may fit that bill. Um, so examples of person um, diabetes can eat, diabetes and CKD, really proteins, again, lean meats, poultry, fish, eggs, unsalted seafoods, um, in that quantities, six to eight ounces a day, really spreading those out throughout the day is how our body uses our protein most efficiently. Um, and keeps helps keep your blood sugar uh, more stable throughout the day. Uh, vegetables listed here are some lower potassium vegetables. You can certainly eat a more wide range of vegetables um, if you're not asked to um, reduce your um, potassium intake. You want to choose whole grain breads and crackers, um, starchy vegetables to get fiber, again, a variety of fruits, choosing unsaturated fats like canola oil, olive oil, avocado oil, um, and then you know drinking um, unsweetened beverages or clear diet sodas, the dark um, caramelizing that they use in um, Pepsi or Coke type products does um, contain more phosphorus. So what's a portion? Um, fruits, a small piece of fruit, um, half a banana, a cup of melon or berries, a tablespoon of, two tablespoons of dried fruit. You'll see a half cup of juice. I Typically juice, it's not giving you much fiber. It's not filling you up. It's very available carbohydrate. Um, typically really minimize that and choose to drink water and eat your fruits. Um, dairy. Um, cup of, you know, cup of milk or yogurt, um, size for a dairy serving, and then starches, um, half a cup to a cup. Um, you'll see a third of a cup of rice or pasta. So, you know, if you're eating rice or pasta, you want to make sure you're you're um, you're cognizant of that serving and really thinking about that plate method, putting that. Uh, carbohydrate food in the quarter of your plate, 
your proteins in a quarter of your plate and then your other foods on the other half of your plate. So you do get more of those non-starchy vegetables and fruits. Um, protein, again, um, servings two to three ounces, spreading that out throughout the day. A little protein at breakfast really helps stabilize your blood sugars in the morning and prevents you getting hungry about an hour after eating breakfast. Um, so having a little bit there, a little bit at lunch, and a smaller portion at dinner versus eating a large portion um, at one meal um, really isn't the way our body uses it most efficiently. Meal planning. Um, portions here just kind of shows you how the plate, again, as I was saying, half of your plate, fruits and vegetables, the protein and the starches, um, kind of dividing up your plate is an easy way to visualize that. Um, for more information, um, you want to look to the Kidney uh, Foundation, www.kidney.org. Um, the American Kidney Fund has really, they have really good suggestions. They have recipes, cookbooks you can send for and resources there. Um, the American Diabetes Association has a lot of information. Um, their Food Hub has um, recipes, meal planning, um, and again, um, webinars such as this one sponsored by Cecilia Health um, provide more information. You, there are many um, topics that have been posted on our website um, that you may watch um, in from past issues. So I just want to um, make sure that you answer any questions. Are there any questions out there? Marcia, it looks, uh, one, one question is like yes. how, how often to, you know, do, do a checkup with a doctor in terms of if you have diabetes, mm -hmm. how often should they be checking your kidneys? Yeah, great. Thank you, Emily. So, um, that, how, so that's a great question. If your kidney function is healthy, generally once a year is fine. But if it seems like your kidney function is declining, then you may want to do that more than once a year. Um, I encourage you, next time you do go to your doctor, ask your provider um, what your kidney function tests are if you don't already know. And again, that test is an G EGFR or a ur urine albumin creatinine ratio. Um, and, and keep track of those so you can um, monitor that. But that's a great question. And it looks like the other question we have is how how should I bring up to my doctor about, you know, if I need to be limiting anything with my diet, uh, either with mm -hmm. the diabetes or CKD? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question to have with your doctor. And again, those lab tests are crucial. If you're checking your blood sugars, you need to bring those to your appointments and talk to your doctor about what that means, what stage of kidney disease um, you do have. Um, and what you can do to keep your kidneys from progressing. Um, so your doctor may um, give you specific recommendations based on those lab tests. They may also do other tests um, to determine potassium levels um, and such and your blood pressure to determine those numbers. But that's a great question. Thanks. Well, uh, thank you so much, Marcia, for presenting today and for covering all that information. Uh, like she said, we do have, if you're looking for something s more specific or more detailed in terms of with the diabetes or CKD, please do check out the Cecilia Health website as well. We do have some webinars coming up here in December and in January as well. Here in December, we have management of CKD and also taking control where you're just kind of tips and tricks um, with looking at the diabetes. And here in January, our, uh, we have just basics of CKD and January is all about um, setting New Year's resolutions focused on the diabetes as well. You can always check us out on our Facebook page, or please do talk to your Cecilia Health dietitian or nurse that you are working with as well. We wanna make sure that we are covering the topics that are important to you, but thank you all again for your time today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, bye-bye.